Alright, here's my take on the classic mid-80s George Lynch modified Marshall kind of tone using the Axe FX3. Uh, you're probably already waving a big red flag because I'm playing a PRS at the moment and George is probably best known for his association with Super Strat guitars, but I do have a couple of Floyd Rose equipped twin humbucker bolt-on neck guitars that we can play around with, but the tone I've gone for is his under lock and key kind of sound, uh, namely the song In My Dreams, and if you go on YouTube you can look up an isolated guitar recording of this, you'll realize that there's quite a lot going on, there's a couple of different parts, uh, one which is like a sort of stock modified Marshall crunchy rhythm kind of thing, and another which is a little bit cleaner and has a bit of chorus on there. Now, uh, while I was thinking about how I was going to do this, I found this post uh, Michael Wagner put in a forum and where he's talking about how they've recorded the guitars for that album and it's just absolute insanity. So he's saying uh, basically they had four different amps, uh, at least one of them was a Marshall Plexi, there was another Marshall, there were two Laney's, he doesn't say what they were, and uh, then basically they had a big room with 14 different microphones on a bunch of different cabs with the two heads and then they had another mic on like a cab in a really dead room and then another mic on a cab in a really live sounding bathroom uh, and then they had like a chorus and the thing that I found really interesting was that all this was getting summed run through an EQ and then it was going to a Fostex 4 track basically to add tape distortion and saturation so uh, yeah lots of stuff going on the way I've tried to replicate that is I've used the Atomica High which is based on, you know, like uh, one of the best sounding modified Marshalls out there. And then the Brit number 34, which is one of those SIR recording amps of, uh, you know, guitar folklore. So I've got a little bit of that blended in there. So it's kind of like a two amp blend. There's a bit of chorus. There's a bit of a plate reverb happening in there. And I've used two impulses that I've shot, a 57 and a 121 on my cab with greenbacks. Been talking a lot so far. What does it actually sound like? And then comes this part. Ah, George. Well, that was absolute garbage, as you can see. Hard stuff to play. Uh, I think you play something more, more like... And a big part of that sound is having a guitar with a Floyd Rose because when he's playing heavy you can hear that the strings, you know, you're getting that thing with a Floyd where when you hit the strings it slightly detunes a little bit, uh, but obviously on this guitar it's not doing that. We'll have a look at the preset in a second, but I want to show you with two different guitars. I've got a PV Wolfgang and then a Hamer Californian with a cool kind of Lynch inspired graphic on it. Let's hear those with this particular preset. <laughs>
So hopefully that gives you an idea of uh, how different guitars impact what's going on in this patch. I will give you a close-up of some of the little tweaks that I've made in the actual amp block and especially in the cab block to get this kind of sound. Alright, let's go into the layout and I'll show you how I've got it all set out. If we go across here, so basically splitting off into two different amps. Amp number one is the Atomica High. These are the settings. I've got the mid and the treble absolutely cranked and the master volume raised up a bit. And I've backed off a little bit of the bass because this is not a super chunky modern kind of sound. So you can go a little bit easier on the bass to get a plexi kind of thing. Uh, in terms of other tweaks, I've got a T808 mod as a boost on there. And then everything else is pretty much stock. I haven't played around with the supply sag or anything like that. But I have hit the front end with this peaking input EQ, which is very much an 80s style thing. You know, the old Furman rack mount uh, parametric EQ trick happening here. So that's all that's happening there. Uh, I haven't played around with the dynamics or anything like that. And then to balance that out, I have got, as I said, these two impulses that I made. Uh, this greenback cab with a 57 and a 121. So that is the cab sound. And then down here, I've got the Brit number 34. Uh, pretty much with a little bit more of a bassy sound going on. Uh, actually, what we're going to do is we'll go back to scene one. So this is on scene one, as you can see, the treble's a little bit lower there than I had in the lead scene. I brought the drive down. We have only got a little bit of this guy going in, but again, boosting the master for that kind of 80s thing. And I haven't touched anything else in that block. And this is with a V30 impulse. This, whoops, <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. Let's hit layout again and edit, that's what I want. This is one of the factory impulses, this York Audio uh, Recto Cab with a 57 on it. So that is pretty cool. If we have a listen to the tone with just one amp, I'm gonna bypass this guy. Have a listen, this is just the Atomica. <laughs> So it just adds a little bit of mid-range and it makes it feel so good to play. Uh, so downstream from that, all I've got going on is a large plate reverb. I've got one and a half seconds time going on it, not a lot of pre-delay, just to add uh, a little bit of sort of brightness and not quite a slap back, but you know, doing a similar idea to a slap back, uh, but obviously with a reverb basically to make it sound really big and 80s style. So let's go home and I'll show you on the lead scene what I'm doing there. I have added a little bit of pitch detune, so I stress just a little bit. I think the mix here is only at like 10% or something like that. 12% on the mix, uh, eight cents either side. Without it, we can have, whoops, I uh, keep going the wrong way. Uh, so without it, it sounds like this. So it's just adding some width there and then the delay, it's pretty straightforward. It's the vintage digital. I'm going for the sort of Roland SDD style delay set at 600 milliseconds. Pretty simple, not too much going on there. Uh, let's have a look though at the cab block because this is where the secret source is. Uh, as I said, I was using these impulses, but what I've done is play around with the preamp section, uh, particularly adding drive and saturation to simulate what would be going on when you're bouncing all of this stuff down to a four track tape recorder with the drive and the saturation off, sounds like this. And in this case, I've got the preamp type set to this uh, Tape 70 US, high quality. And you can hear there that what it's really doing is just adding some upper partials and it's adding compression in a really musical way uh, that I think kind of just brings the amp to life. So you can use this on basically any DI tone and I think it uh, really adds an extra element there. So uh, yeah, thanks to Michael Wagner for actually sharing what he did because I think that's a big part of the tone there. And uh, having a listen to that on just the plain rhythm scene, let's go back in there. If I turn the drive off in particular, this is without. <laughs> Thank you.
And there you go, that's my kind of George Lynch preset. Uh, I, I guess we can call it a tribute kind of patch there because this is, um, this is the way I would set up a patch for an 80s style gig or an 80s style recording. It's not going to sound exactly the same as they would have done it back then, but it's using some of the tweaks and some of the tricks. And uh, I really, really like this. I'm going to use this patch a lot, actually. It just kind of started off as, a, as an experiment, but um, yeah, I'm kind of in love with it. So I'll put it up online for you guys as well as the impulses. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, hit subscribe. Don't hate on me too much for not being able to play like George Lynch and for using a PRS, and I will see you next time.